Hey guys, Jerry and Komodo here. Gonna be doing some more Black Ops 1, this time doing some Team Deathmatch on Array, and I gotta say, this is the slowest game I have ever gotten Attack Dogs on, ever. Like, there was a good one, two, three minute stretch where I literally didn't find one enemy. I, I think I went like six minutes without dying, and it took me that long to get my Attack Dogs. So, I, I don't know what the hell the enemy team was doing or where they were. But hey, using the HK-21 here, I'm going full LMGs for these videos for some reason. Uh, I covered all four of them in this game within one day. I recorded this like two days ago. Uh, so it's something along there. So I still remember this vaguely just because I remember this game being... I'm going to be honest, it was, it was kind of boring, so pardon this gameplay, but we'll try to liven it up with the commentary a little bit. So yeah, let's move on to the questions. Uh, we're continuing on to this question because there's kind of a lot to talk about with it. Uh, what characters do you want to see being added in the Smash 4? You were saying Bayonetta. Yes. I mean... Sure, Bayonetta is not a Nintendo character, but, I mean... Even can... though they have their exclusives for some stupid reason. Yeah, also, I, I want to say... Who made that? Platinum? Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> I loved Bayonetta 1, I'm just saying. I absolutely adored that game. Bayonetta's like... Yeah, never mind, I'm not going to touch on that. But Bayonetta was an awesome game. And you know what? I think I would have much rather you guys not making Bayonetta 2 rather than sticking it on the Wii U of all the consoles. Now, sure, the other two have hiccups. I don't remember any of the PS3 right now, but the Xbox One has a lot of... It's just flying I'm in the wind sure right Ninten now. I'm pretty sure it was Nintendo's way of basically going, Hey, look, we can have hardcore games too. When obviously they can't. I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and quote a movie here. But, um, and, and there's gonna be cursing in this, so if you don't want to hear it, just skip a couple seconds. Who the fuck wants to see him? <laughs> I don't want a Wii U. There's nothing on the Wii U for me. Even if you put, like, every single... You could put every game that I'd ever loved see, the, on the, the Wii U, and I would never buy it. The thing with the Wii U is you've already gone too far into making games family-friendly and advertising to that crowd. You can't just change it mid-generation. So, like, I'm, I'm that, that's kind of why I'm going... I, you're obviously not going to see Bayonetta in Smash. It's entirely against who they would usually put in Smash. It's entirely against who the, the market they're going for. I mean, they're going for this family-friendly, kid-friendly bullshit type thing instead of... And they've been doing this ever since the Wii came out. So, yeah, it, you know, I'm just not going to see it happening. I know, but still. It'd be nice to see like Bayonetta going to town on Mario with Pillow Talk. And it still amuses me how many people t really try to defend Nintendo from basically completely turning their back on their original fan base. I mean, you go from the GameCube to the Wii. Sure, the GameCube wasn't really selling as well as the as the uh, the Xbox and the PS2 was, but it didn't fail entirely. And you could have done things to turn that around. And you didn't need to just completely turn your back and just basically sell out to casual gamers. And the way I really look at the way Nintendo did things for that is, like, they're trying to kind of bridge the gap between, like, online mobile games and actual games. And do you really need to? No. I truly and honestly believe that, um... I don't want to say this entirely, but I feel like mobile games need to die. Eh, I, it's... I'm honestly kind of indifferent about it because, you know, most of the time people are only playing those when they're just, like, they're bored and they're on the bus or something like that. Yeah. And I don't know what the hell, where this guy went. He just, he straight up vanished. He fell into non-existence. But he literally straight up vanished. I'm sure he just, I think he just fell into last stand and then quit out of the game. Because <laughs> he wasn't there. I didn't see him run away. Like, I have no idea where he went. He's just gone. He might have been the guy I killed up here, but I don't know what happened. If he was the guy I killed up here, then he was oblivious to where I actually was, even though I was just shooting at him. That's a little weird. Then he disappeared again. Oh, there he is. My teammate killed him. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. But yeah, I definitely don't see them adding in Bayonetta, and to be entirely honest, I don't really care about Bayonetta, so I wouldn't care if she was there or not. And how do you make Bayonetta family-friendly? Like, how do you do that? Um... Don't give her the chainsaw? <laughs> <laughs> make her clothes? Like, how do you make her dress? Like, <laughs> Well, I mean... What, what is her smash gonna be? Naked with hair everywhere? I mean, what are they gonna do? 
I yeah. <laughs> There's no, you really don't have an answer to that. I don't, because it's like she summons those demons and pretty much all of her clothes are gone. <laughs> is, is this how Catholic people see porn? <laughs> I The other really is no safe way to add Bayonetta into Smash. It's just not going to happen. Uh, who else could they add? I don't know. Honestly, when it comes to Nintendo games, the only Nintendo games I give a shit about or Pokemon and Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem being the main one, that's the reason I even own a 3DS. Didn't they add Little Mac? Yes. How did he How did he graduate from trophy to actual character? I'm okay with that, to be honest. He's, he's a unique individual character that has a lot of history in Nintendo, so... Yeah, it's better than them adding in someone like Rob. Okay, hi, guy. You're oblivious as hell. He, was, he had a sniper, so... Okay, yeah... Whoa. Turning the corner while reloading is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, but hey, I finally got all my kill streaks. This is, what, how long of the video? Yeah, six minutes into the video. It took that long. <laughs> this was a slow game. Very, very slow game. But yeah, I honestly can't think of any other franchises. I mean, sure, you have Metroid. You, like you said, F Zero uh, a few videos ago. Pokemon and Fire Emblem. Other than that, I can't think of anything else that I really care to see more in Nintendo, and I can't think of anything else off the top of my head at all that they could add in. You know why? Because I'm just other gonna than go on a mini farming rant. Mario. Yes, other than that, I'm gonna go on a little mini rant here. Every large game company out there, they're they're being stagnant. They all need new blood. They need to try something new. They need to go for that risk reward factor and introduce a new game, introduce new characters, and that way they could pump some new blood into something like this. Also, you know, I it's really... It's funny that usually this is not something you could ever say about Nintendo in a way, because even though their games are almost all the same damn thing, because, you know, Zelda's been the same since Ocarina of Time, uh, Mario is... They're, farm, they're milking the hell out of Mario, but they try to at least change it up a little bit in hardware and as much as I think they're stupid gimmicks I don't need motion controls or anything like this they're definitely not the same that way around but I do get what you're saying lately they haven't really tried to change it all no one has and oh my god like this is really off topic here but I have to say it Capcom you are dropping the ball like I, I <sighs> by the way these attack dogs at the bottom of these stairs like I don't know why but they stayed there for the whole game like, the corpses just didn't disappear. That's weird. Treyarch hates dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, when was the last time Capcom made a good decision? When was the last time any Japanese company made a good decision? Good point. I'm uh, sure actually, within Japan, on. I'm sure they did. But when it comes to the western part of America... The western part of America. When it comes to the <laughs> western part of the world, it's like they completely ignore their western counterpart of their company. And it's just like, nope, the Japanese people know the best. We're going to ignore you. Then why do you have that division of your company if you're just going to ignore them? Like, okay. Now, I'm going to go in the complete opposite direction of what I just said. Some games, they they need a new... They, they need a new addition, a new iteration of the game. For example, and again, I'm looking at Capcom here, Mega Man. Now, Mega Man 9 and 10 were fun and all for the, you know, ridiculously hard factor, but when was the last time we had a good Mega Man X game? Let me answer that for you. It's before it went 3D. And, you know, I'm honestly going to say when you have a good successful franchise, it should not change too much. It should yes. stay the same game. But... At a certain point, when does it start getting too stale, and when do you need to go, we should move on to a new franchise, do something risky? And I think Ubisoft actually did something really smart where they kind of bridged the gap between them, where it's like they had Far Cry 3 and then they had Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which really had nothing to do with Far Cry 3 other than the gameplay. I think more companies need to do things like that. That I are agree definitely. With you wholeheartedly. And it was honestly kind of more of a safe thing than what we usually see. Sure, it was it was different, and it was honestly kind of really risky with its whole... I mean, just look at it. <laughs> it's a cliche 80s action film, really. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't risky because it was tied into the Far Cry 3 name. And that Far Cry true. 3 was a successful game as is. So if you start doing things like that, I can be all down for that, because Blood Dragon was amazing. I just gotta say, like... People need to stray away from cookie-cutter games, you know, how everybody's trying to be Call of Duty. 
they gotta come out with something fresh, something with good gameplay, a decent story, because story may not be everything in a game, but it is a lot. I don't care what you say. I'm not saying story isn't important. What I'm saying is story needs to be implemented into the gameplay well. You can have the best story in the world in a first-person shooter, and the gameplay can still kind of kill it. And that's one of the biggest problems with Spec Ops The Line. Amazing story, the best I've seen in any game, like, end of story. But the gameplay was 2006 third-person shooter and really hurt the game, too. Eh, I liked it. I mean, it wasn't necessarily terrible gameplay, but it really wasn't good. It was okay. It's just the story definitely made up for that, which is rare that you can get a shooter that can make up for bad gameplay with a story. I can agree with that. And the same thing can really be said about Bioshock Infinite to a lesser degree. Anyway, this has been some more Black Ops 1. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next video.